I can I said that was supposed to be my first question which is can you hear me? <laughs> I, I I hear you loud and clear. All good. All cool. Good. Well, since now uh Sylvia has uh joined us, welcome to the 11 Morse codes by Bessie this live episode. Like how how crazy is this? The how is it how is it 11th already? I don't how long have you been I don't, Inside, I don't know, like call me hashtag overachiever, I guess. Three weeks is a very, very short time in my time yeah. span. So maybe that, that explains the, uh, the answer to all of, all of the viewers. How am I coping? Busy. Uh, yeah. So before we get started, um, everybody, you see there's this uh, little question box just about like in the middle down there. If you have any questions for Sylvia or me, keep on uh, Put all of them there. I will check them on at the at the uh, second part of uh, this experience. But let's let's get it started. Uh, I am happy to introduce to you a lovely, lovely, inspiring person who I've had the honor to work with several times. Uh, Sylvia Bajek, fashion and art consultant, and the founder of Studio Bajek. Could you please tell everybody who doesn't know who you are, what you do, what gets you moving before the lockdown and during the lockdown? Well, the most important thing that I need to tell everyone is how to pronounce my surname. Yeah, I'm, I'm... And that's, I know, right? No, nobody knows. So like officially in the UK, everyone always says Sylvia Bajek. That's like, you know, like the bank, HMRC. <laughs> And everyone but my like my real name like in Poland nobody I'm from Poland in Poland no one would understand that <laughs> so my real name is Sylvia Bayek so it's Bayek. pronounced I know changes everything it does. and then another thing that it's sort of I think that only again Polish uh, native speakers would understand uh, Bayek actually studio Bayek because of my surname it means uh, studio of the fairy tale Ah. Of all tales. So yeah, so there is. It's not a. It's not just my surname. So I completely understand that like people in the UK will never get that, but like people in Poland would get that. Yeah, like so, I, yeah. I, I can totally relate to that. I'm just like I love the fact that your surname means fairy tale. Mine is Beracula, and it's usually Beracula Kalakalaki, and and I'm <laughs> like I'm, I'm I'm used to that, but but the meaning of that is like as fabulous as back village <laughs> so so i just I'm, I'm more than happy with the pachakatakataka it sounds better or then i'm just called this is one or then i'm Vishna. so it's i'm either a, a moped or from india but anyways back to you so what what do you how what does your work consist of well my work consists of uh, getting back to like a few hundred emails <laughs> And you know, picking up the phone. Um, I work like I work in between of different sort of email accounts and a lot of different Instagram accounts, and uh, obviously WhatsApp. I think that everyone who works in uh, fashion can relate. So you sort of don't have this division between personal life and work. Like we just do what we do. Um, but sort of on like a more uh, precise note, I do two things. So I do consulting in. Um, that's what I've been doing over a couple of years. I do consulting mainly in fashion, a little bit sometimes I do it for like arts or creative ventures. Um, so that's sort of something that I could sort of, you know, I, I still could do that during during lockdown and actually kept me pretty busy. Um, and the other thing that I do is creative production. Creative production, it's all, often people get a little confused what that means. Uh, creative production, it's um, having input in both 
creative concept as well as the execution. So it can be either or or both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I knew that because I've, I've, I've had the luxury to work together. Yeah, work with you yeah. because actually it's quite funny that the last shoot that I, I personally did before this lockdown was with the lovely Sylvia. And, yes. uh, and there's a couple of teasers coming out and you will you will see more soon. Yes. So yes. the rest never, like we, the wicked never rests. We're always here. So are you currently isolating alone or with someone? I'm isolating in South London with my flatmates. We are very fortunate to have a very, very big house. Um, so, and I normally work at least half of the time from home and the other half, uh, that sort of, that, that was the setup. The setup changed recently, but um, normally I've been like half of the time at home and half of the time either with my clients or um, like, you know, doing um, go sees or, or castings or shoots and so on. Um, so yes, yeah, so being sort of stuck at home, nothing much changed uh, in my sort of like every day, minus not having the shoots. Um, yeah, and we have like a, we have a really big house. So everyone has like two living rooms and everyone has their own bathroom and there's an outside area. So it's not like I've, I've been pretty fortunate, I guess, uh, when, when it comes to the setup. Um, so yeah, just, you, you don't see every, and I've lived in this house for a long time as well, but everything happened things that could have happened. So it's like we had some issue with the washing machine. We had an issue with the fridge, but like it's a new fridge. Why did the handle break like now? Like you can't, so yeah. So essentially stuff like that was happening, but like the everyday of like staying at home was fine. Cause you're staying with your partner, right? Yeah, I, I am. I am staying with my partner and we had the, we had the similar uh, type of thing because we, uh, we went to lockdown almost like a week before than everybody else here in London, just because we could and my partner could work from home. But for the first uh, four weeks, we had no internet. Like, what do you mean you have like no? none? Like, our internet, like are you, our internet, are you sure you live in? Internet was down. Uh, all of my clients were late on their payments. I had zero pounds on my account. My phone was cut off and we survived. Here we are still, you know? And uh, so, to be oh, sorry, it was like the inter was it like in Hackney? You live in Hackney somewhere, no, right? No, I live in uh, Tower Hamlets. I'm ta oh yeah, of course, Tower Hamlets. But it, it was it was like that sort of you know uh, uh, culmination of what I call absolute fuckery <laughs> that Virgin Media they had actually sent three teams to uh, fix our cable. First time they pulled the cable to a wrong building. Second time they pulled a new cable but didn't connect to our building. And then third time I had to call the, um, <laughs> the area manager. So his nephew came and connect us eventually. So you've got the internet now. Yeah. Well, you must, have the, you must have something working because, you know, uh, unless it's like, no, it, you, you have your Wi-Fi working as well, right? Now, now I'm, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, I don't it's like, fine. Yeah. I, but I, mean, I had like a couple, I had like some people asking like what, like, you know, people that work, like what would we do if, um, if, uh, if that was like, you know, 10 or 15 years ago and I was, I'm like, we would be on holidays exactly. because of, you know, so, uh, yeah. Well, but that kind yeah. of, that kind of like answers, I was just about to ask you, like, how are you, you feeling apart from the work? Like, how are you feeling right now with uh, all of these restrictions? So the, the thing that changed in the last week is that I decided to stop watching the news. Yeah. At the beginning, I, at the beginning of the, I normally watch the news every day, almost, or at, almost every day. And I do like, I go for like press coverage, fashion and like, you know, the not usual sort of international affairs. Um, so then like, you know, when the whole thing like kicked off, I was like, hmm, if I want to keep watching the news, at least let's, let's watch them from like different countries and in different languages. So I was sort of, I went on to this, like, you know, watching French news and Italian news and Polish news. The only news that I decided not to watch were the Russian news. <laughs> yeah, because they lie. They I lie. I don't need that. They lie. Because I was like, look, it's a, good, it's a good time to sort of, like, practice languages. So I was like, which one do I pick? But Russian was no-go. So it's like, I'm not, I can't watch that. Um, and then I stopped watching the news, so I live in my bubble. Um, I don't really know what's happening unless someone texts me or my phone tells me. Um, so this last week is like a, I don't know, it's sort of going back to this oblivion in a way. Uh, but I think that overall, when it comes to the lockdown, like 
we all sort of went through like different stages and the stages I think that everyone I mean I shouldn't be speaking for everyone but after sort of speaking to my friends I figured that most people go through most sort of stages that include like being angry or being upset or being bored or being scared or even enjoying it sometimes because they have like all the like free time and so on and so on but I think that the most important thing that I learned that you can take from the experience is to uh, be selfish not selfish like selfish to me is not a negative word like put yourself first and see what it is that you wanted to do and, st and start doing that if like to you that means chilling and watching like more movies and you know like having a I don't know a bit of like downtown or like reading books doesn't mean that you have to be very active doesn't mean that you have to you know that doesn't mean that you have to be doing a lot of things but if it means like you know you want to enjoy like your time off like by all means like to me the whole thing started with like a huge admin update so I looked at all of my sort of like you know it's like accounting and uh, you know and like things uh, emails that maybe I should reply to uh, <laughs> you know like stuff like that like obviously yeah I'm pretty much ready with like you know to, to submit my tax return and you know it's like things like that anything that I could have posted on eBay because I all of us sort of working in this industry we have stuff that we shouldn't have any longer because we don't have space for it so I was like I did all of that not that anyone is buying anything right now they but, are buying, you know trust me at right. least at least that's done you know so I was like yeah so everything the whole thing really the whole thing started with like the huge huge um admin update that was like the that was like the biggest and like the most important thing that I, that I started doing at the very at the very beginning and um, I did that consciously to have a bit of a routine and to have things to do because we didn't know how long it would last although I hoped that it would have been over with because the first week when they announced lockdown in Italy I immediately bought tickets to Italy for holidays for end of April so I technically speaking should have gone to Naples last weekend and of course I didn't yeah so yeah and then I realized it's been so long so that's uh, yeah that's sort of how the whole thing uh, started so what did you do with when you didn't have internet well I uh, luckily my partner had uh, had his work phone from the company with unlimited like very low data so I would just kind of follow him like a shark, shark on a boat, like give me the Wi-Fi. But obviously, you know, I was supposed to launch this, this whole Morse code things like literally three weeks before it happened. But and that's only mm -hmm. because that's only because of Virgin Media that why that happened. And uh, to be honest, like it was it was fine. You know, I was playing like PlayStation. You know, like I grew up with things without internet and you know I'm, I'm resourceful you know I, I can pretty much like uh, make gold out of pop shit you know I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. so so like for, for me that wasn't that wasn't difficult for me it was like I was more I remember I was more frustrated I was more frustrated with the fact that how this type of like fuckery is going on like how is it so difficult to fix a cable or how how difficult it is for people to understand the the severity of the situation for me it was like because it was very clear straight away i was like okay this is gonna last a long time okay let's gear up i said to everybody from the beginning like this the things are not going to be back to normal anytime soon and this is going to take a long time and i remember people were saying like why are you in a panic and I'm like, I am not in a panic. I am, I am more pissed off that you cannot seem to comprehend what is mm. going on. Like it was almost like, I felt like I was living in a parallel universe where everybody else is on denial. And I'm like, the bomb is there. No, it's not, <laughs> you know, it was, it was weird. But then I just kind of like, get over it, did exactly the same thing as you, stop watching the news, uh, only in the mornings, maybe in the evenings. Check only Finnish and uh, the UK ones, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. What is your take on all the conspiracy theories? Uh, like, I've, I've actually had like a lot of talk with this with several people. Uh, I've always said like that if there's smoke, there's fire. I don't say that. You know, I believe that this is a case of broken, uh, broken phone, you know, syndrome. That there's a little bit of truth, and then people like spice it up as it goes along but i always believe in every like i've, I've always been a bit of that type of person that i believe that 
every, even in folklore, even on dragons, even in all of this sort of stuff. I'm like, hey, why is everybody referencing on certain things so many times if it never happened? And I believe that. I, I believe that there's something fishy is going on. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, I could, I could talk about like uh, that type of theories for for ages and ages and ages. So, but this is like you know the the, the vaccine one or the or the 5G one, or the combination of both, um, or...? I, I, th I think the 5G thing is bullshit, because 5G comes actually from a north, like, where it was developed is it's a northern uh, high-tech city called Oglu in Finland. And they've been, they've had 5G there already for a couple of years while they've been testing that. So that whole 5G on the pole shit, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a bit far-fetched. You know, then it would be mm. the same thing, it's like, okay, uh, cell phones are here, are here to put so we can uh, get people more cancer. You know, cell phones come from Finland. Hello, Nokia. So I'm like, to me, that is just like I'm like I don't believe in that. Uh, uh, what what comes to um, any type of um, vaccines and stuff like that? I've never been a person who believes in vaccines. I just had a uh, talk with this with my mom who was born in the year 50 and she told me that the reason why none of it, me or my siblings got vaccinated for certain things was because her older sister actually died because uh, as, a, as an infant right after she was born because they gave a vaccination to a specific uh, disease like present at the time and it killed a lot of infants so my mom mm. always remembered since she was a little girl that uh, vaccines are not good for you. So that's just my take. Like it's a personal take. I don't know. People can do whatever they want. But I just don't believe that you should put any type of weird weird substances with your own will into your body. Or eat any, mm. any medication that you do not need. I don't believe in that. So in, in that sort of sense, I think all of that is about making money to the pharmaceuticals. That's what I think. It's a, we're living in a capitalist world, whether we like it or not. But, yeah. but anyways, where do you see uh, our industry going now with this lockdown and after the lockdown? Um, I think that like it, it sort of, it, it depends which part of the industry you look at. Um, so I honestly, sort of as I was saying, I didn't, I don't know, based on nothing, like based on sort of what I what I was hoping. I, I thought that the whole situation in which we are right now would not last as long as it's lasting. So I didn't even consider the overall impact and sort of, and that's the impact is, you, you know, you can measure that in, in the, you know, lost jobs and lost contracts and lost opportunities and so on and so on. Um, I honestly have zero idea. The only thing that I can say that like, you know, I've been watching the, various sort of predictions and um, business analysis reports that that's done, you know, by Business of Fashion and they did like a great sort of overview uh, in terms of what's happening. We're looking at about, what I think it was about 40% of, um, you know, business loss in the fashion industry just this year. So 40%, like, you know, that sounds scary. That's, you know, I, looking at, hopefully like looking at positives, like I, I've spoken to a lot of people, I've spoken to people that run showrooms, I've spoken to people uh, multiple people that run different showrooms have spoken to of course like a lot of like most of our friends they always like you know from this industry so we have those chats like what it is that we think what what it is that might happen and and what to do about it i think that the only sort of good thing that i can think of that hopefully i mean two maybe we can all slow down a little bit and go back to sort of appreciating what it is that we do um and the second thing is that maybe because of how how impactful uh, this situation is on the economy, we will see less people doing certain jobs that maybe should be doing something else. Yeah, I totally agree with you. you. Know? Totally, <laughs> totally, yeah. totally agree with you yeah. on that. Just because yeah. because I think like even with that, even inside of that 40%, you have to think about like that that includes also the sort of like um, fast fashion chains that are going down. So it's like as in a whole, like it's not only the luxury market that we're talking about plus to be honest you know no offense all of you luxury good multi-billion companies you will be fine if you lose a couple of million 
don't worry. You know, <laughs> it's not like you are gonna go, you you're gonna be bankrupt because you can sell thousand bags. But I mean, it's like I think the problem with this whole cycle is because it's so imbalanced that a lot of the independent ones are the ones who are gonna suffer the most just because they don't have that type of cash flow. Or uh, mm -hmm. so so mm -hmm. I, so I think that is the problem. To be honest, uh, do I feel any sort of bad when I'd like, for example, today that I read that warehouse and oasis went down? No, absolutely not. I just feel bad for the people who work there who is going to lose sure. who's going to lose their paychecks. But they will they will uh, be employed. They they will be fine in the sort of sense. But I am I do not feel any sympathy for these type of companies that do, do not actually distribute a nothing to uh to the fashion industry <laughs> nothing to yeah uh, how do you how, how do you think your your job will change because you do like you actually do a couple of things that open up well uh, well to be honest like, yeah. uh for, for me maybe the reason why i'm not i am not freaking out is that ever since i've been in the industry i've always kind of been a, a bit of a person who does a lot of things you know and, and i don't to be honest i don't give a give a toss about titles so i keep, uh, i care about like if i am entertained within myself and i'm i, I feel mm -hmm. challenged so i to be honest for me even even if i wouldn't style a single single picture i can do so many things you know because i didn't mm -hmm. put all of my eggs in one basket <laughs> mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm i'm really not worried and I've, I've i've always been that type of person you know like even before fashion fashion Took, took over you know I worked in restaurants I've done I've done the sort of like ground level shit jobs I've done the mm -hmm. office jobs I've done the creative stuff I've, I've mm -hmm. been the one who's created things so I'm not worried I've never been mm -hmm. worried I think I just always feel like before this lockdown everybody else had a problem with the fact that I did a lot of different things and now I'm like what do you do now you know like because I don't have that problem it's like oh my god the office is closed. I can still just, just because that everything is, is within me. And I don't really I don't care. If if that would mean that we're gonna go into some weird uh sci-fi uh lockdown sort of thing, you know, I'm I'm all automatic like this, like yeah, okay, I can infiltrate in the factory and then I become the rebel. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm always like looking for solutions and I think yeah this is what I encourage everybody to do, that you don't have to you know, follow one path like you used to be for for our, for example, our grandparents who literally mm -hmm. stayed in one same job until you know they are released from their duties. We don't. We yeah. we have the luxury and the information now that we don't have to do that. Anymore. Yeah, and when it comes to that, like I mean, I relate because I do a couple of different things, but I also very much agree because this system, this system that people can't really follow, but it's like very much in everyone's head it's like this old school american system like from the 50s that you would start work at like whether it was a factory or a newspaper whatever it was and you would stay there for like majority of your life and uh, i don't know like there's also like a great reference in a fantastic movie called the e movie and the bees like you know they choose they choose the jobs at the beginning and it's explained to them like you get that job and that's the job that you get to do for the rest of your life and you know this one bee decides obviously the label in the situation and so yeah, so I think that it's it's better for a lot of reasons to, to sort of uh, basically I agree if you don't put like all the eggs like in one basket, but plenty of reasons like for the, for the creative aspects. But why would you limit yourself? Um, for uh, for the personal and professional development, but also for the security reasons. Like it's quite scary to, to especially if you freelance uh, to to sort of you know to, to depend on one source of um, income on you know one big client let's say because things change it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be the global pandemic that it's making us stay at home it can be it can be anything else yeah it can be it can, it can be, be an illness can change their minds it can be it can be everything yeah. but it's, it's almost like the sort, sort of same thing that i i find some sometimes i, I get a bit of, like irked about the fact that just because i work in a creative industry so if i'm like creatively if i jump from role to role or like the things what I do that is frowned upon, but then in a more like sort of analytical business uh, society, this is what you should be doing. It's fine that you kind of like upgrade your skill set, like from 
from the code or you became this and then this and it's part of the same thing but it's for some, mm-hmm. some for some reason in the creative industry even though as as lovely it is i just i just find it it's the same as in entertainment like people are constantly like competing with each other for the wrong reasons because mm-hmm. because creatively you know i can't do the same thing for example what you do i can emulate it but i will never be able to do the same thing mm-hmm. So then I'd rather focus on my own shit and master that than try to master somebody else's shit and always fail, you know, by doing so. Because But which one which, which one is your favorite from all the hats that you're wearing? To be honest, it changes. So because for for a lot of like for a couple of years now, you know, I I I I always have to look at retrospect because I started out from performing before fashion and then morphed into fashion because I had to give up performing so then being a model I still had the element of performance within the picture but then mm-hmm. then when that shifted then I I was interested about hair so then I did hair but I could not uh express myself enough by doing hair which let yeah. which let me then to do styling and then naturally I I was more drawn into doing the concepts of done production. I do not like production, but I can do it. I don't like it because I am not that analytical. I can be if I have to, but it's not like what I'm like, oh, you know, this is what I want to do. Yeah. But for me, I I kind of I've always seen myself almost like a movie director. I like to oversee everything. Mm. In a sort of sense like I I I I'm more interested about the big picture than You know, yeah. You know, I've never been interested about like a brand. I was like, "Oh, this is this brand. I need to feature this." If it looks like shit in my my opinion and doesn't fit the brief, it has yeah. to go. You know, I don't care. <laughs> so Yeah, I I I understand. So I understand. So, so, Creative so I think I, I think it it changes. It changes now, for example, I'm I'm more in I'm currently I'm enjoying the fact that I can talk to you and a lot of people and reach out and help people to you know have those conversations with themselves maybe even encourage them to have conversations with people that they couldn't have it before be a bit more open be a bit more honest it's okay to fuck up it's okay to uh you know be imperfect that makes me more happy right now than seeing seeing something that i produced and then put that on a, some sort of pedestal and say like look at me now i feel like that time is past now. you know that is that is not the the thing that i i feel like it's important right now maybe in the future i'm not saying that you're not should be proud of what you produce but i don't think like when people are dying and all of that sort of stuff you know what you wear or what you do all the time that is not the point if you know mm. I can I can use my passport as extension of my expression but I'm not in, I'm not here to sell anything I'm not here to capitalize on things if you know mm. Yeah there's a very fine line Yeah there's a very very there's a very fine line between sort of what is what is the right thing to do right now um and what is a, the, the very wrong thing to do when it comes to any capital coming out of you know promotion related to anyone else's sort of suffering yeah. so yeah yeah of course of course yeah yeah because Wait, yeah because for me from the beginning like i i got from a lot of like PRs because i've i've had designers that will be designers in in the future who will be joining the show that's asking like how much do we have to pay for this and i was like nothing like that like why well, mm-hmm. why would you even think like that but well, of course because my brain is not like wired to be capitalized or like okay i need to yeah. get paid for this it's a different thing if i if, if you book me for a shoot or whatever i do my thing it's like that's my day job so it's big i get to yeah. do that but uh um, yeah so yeah i was just kind of like no it's for free <laughs> like what <laughs> and i was like yes this cop you know i think that that's the that's the sort of sort of thing it's like well, for me that's the price that somebody gives their time to me and mm. to everybody who's watching I think that is priceless. You know, that's that little human connection that we can have now because we're all locked up in our house. Yeah. Are you leaving the house at all? Not really. I think I think I've been doing like 
one, once a week to go food shopping, in and out. I'm I tried that. I tried that, but then like I, I, I like I struggle to get, to like to get everything that I need. Uh, so it just like once a week, it just doesn't work. But yeah, it's once a week for like you know to go on on a trip to like a big sort of supermarket, which I normally don't even go to. So I didn't I didn't know what everything is. So this is like you know the situation of sort of you know finding your way around where is pasta. Oh uh, no! For me, I'm like in, um, I'm in and out. Like I have like my territory down. No, like, so ooh. I didn't I didn't know. I didn't know because I'm not there like often enough to sort of know where everything is. So that was sort of quite, uh, that was quite weird. Uh, but yeah, I just like, I leave like this, uh, you know, small sort of corner shop next to my house. So I'm there if I need anything. Um, yeah, and I uh, made like, I sort of started leaving my house like just to be outside when I'm on the phone. Ah. <laughs> I don't really go anywhere. Like I go out, like I'm in front of my house and I just like maybe like just walk in front of my house because I, I'm really not bored like I'm, I'm pretty busy and I can sort of sit like in front of my computer for hours and hours there are things that plus I've done like you know a lot of sort of catch up game with a couple of projects that I wanted to do the, the ones that like we never have time to do but we always want to do so it's like you know so it's like staying at home and staying at home and not leaving I'm not really good at like um, sort of indoors exercising I normally cycle a lot so that's that's sort of if I cycle now, like if I go for a cycle once a week, it's such a struggle. Like I'm scared. I'm scared to think what's going to happen when they reopen and when you have to like do things and you have to be like, you know, rushing and like get places and be fast and be responsive and be ready in the morning to leave the house and all of those things. That's going to be difficult. That's going to be difficult for us all, I have to say. Yeah, to, um, yeah, to be honest, I think the only thing what what I've experienced is the sort of like social anxiety, like I've said earlier, is just the thing, I trust myself, I don't trust the others. Mm. You know, so that's always been, it's almost like the sort of thing, the reason why I've never got a driver's license, it's like, like, I, to be honest, I actually don't even trust myself behind the wheel, but like, if you would put me out there, you know, I would be like, I would, I would be collateral, collateral mm. damage for everyone, myself included. Yeah, I understand. I understand. No, like to me, uh, I don't know. I think that this week I'm sort of leaning towards more. Do we have to really be like locked up? Like, do we really? Like, yes, I un like I understand. Like, I I understand what's happening. But like this week is more. It's more like the mood of like, are you sure? Yeah. Like, can we like can we revise for a second? <laughs> I, I think I, I think like, I think it's the psychological element of it because we're starting to get used to this. That's the thing. Whether we like it or not, we're starting to get yeah. used to the fact. And then humans are like that. You do one thing too long. You eat the same food for too long. It's natural that you want to do something else. Yeah, you create a habit. Yeah. So I'm already like, you know, yeah, I just want to go dancing. Like I was like, fuck the you know the offices and work. I just want to go. Dancing. Yes, yes, a party. That's what I miss. I think the most out of everything. I'm like, please. I was like thinking that like before. I think that before they extended the lockdown to the second, the lot of three weeks or whatever it was, and I was thinking they should all like just let us break the you know let us break the lockdown just for the weekend, <laughs> and then we can all go back. We can all go back. You know, have this like a one week. Yeah, uh, it would have been for the, fun. for the hangover, for the hangover, and then it's fine, and then we can still stay another couple of weeks because you know it would have been a great, like it would have been a great party. So after, you know, after you stop but, drinking, but and trust me, the you know, after party of the aftermath of that would have been catastrophic. Of course, <laughs> of course. But I was thinking, like, why no one else is suggesting that? I was like, is it only me thinking that that's the, that's the way to go for Easter? You know, yeah. just let us party over Easter. Um, but yeah, yeah, that didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. But definitely, out of everything, I went because I think that everyone digested what it is that they missed, what it is that they liked and disliked about their previous life. Hundred percent, party. I want to go to a rave. <laughs> like that's 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 what it is, you know. Yeah, it's gonna be social distancing so, rave. Like, like hi. I don't know. Like, I, yeah. I, I saw this like amazing clip, with, like somebody posted on here on Instagram about like how a um, a waiter is practicing for the new new normal 
literally like two meters away throwing coca-cola bottles at the table because uh, i saw that it was, it was so funny but uh before we uh go rantling around again somewhere really really far i want to before we run out of time i would like to hear how did you as a small sylvia when you were a kid how did you end up doing fashion and art oh my god this is the most random story <laughs> no one really asks me that first of <laughs> I all. Know, but me, yeah, I do. I want to no one asked me that so that was never ever any type of plan that was not even ever a dream so i was supposed to be a lawyer i was studying to go to a law school i got accepted and i actually everything started like i actually went to study law and i know that i would have been an amazing lawyer but like the whole thing the whole thing is like i was like i was supposed to be a practicing lawyer um there was the whole but like you know the prep for that it's a couple of years like it's not something that you just decide from one day to another so there was a lot of energy invested in that stuff before because i was I was watching your other videos and you mentioned that you used to dance i used to dance as well so i was thinking at some point so the decision went through should i keep on dancing or should i focus on sort of like becoming you know a lawyer so i was like let's be a lawyer fine like you know, it's like but it was also like a cool thing for me to do and when i was as i was studying history and you know social studies and all of those sort of things to prep to even be able to get to law school um I just realized that I was like thinking, what makes me actually, what do I actually like to do? Like, what, what is like, what keeps like, you know, what, what, what is fun? And I was like, I always had a lot of fashion and sort of mainly fashion, but not only magazines, but I can't explain how many I have. So once I shipped some from London to Poland and it's like hundreds of kilograms. So it's like, you know, let's say like you have 50 boxes arriving just with magazines. So I was like, you know, I always like, I've lived through those magazines, I collect them, I like them. I was like, what is it? I was like, was watching like a lot of music videos, a lot of movies. I know that a lot of people say that, but I was watching a lot of movies and sort of understanding how they made and all of that sort of stuff. And I was like, there's something there. But where I come from, it's not that I come from like any like, bad family or anything like that. It's just that the idea of doing anything in creative industries is very far-fetched. It's not it's not that again like it's not that my parents they wouldn't support it but it's just not on the table like you wouldn't yeah. you it wouldn't even cross your mind like you'd be talking like post soviet is you know post soviet like block of blocks of flats in you know like in 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 Poland like you can, you, can, you get the picture it's sort of like you know it's like you, you get those in Moscow you get those in Berlin so like what like you know it just doesn't fit um so yes yeah, so I went to I studied in in this in this law school and I was looking for a job I was looking for a job in fashion straight away that was the thing. So it's like, let's, okay, let's study. Let's study to be a lawyer. Let's look for a job in fashion. I got a job in fashion that I didn't take. That was, that's when I lived in Milan. Um, I got a job initially as, um, um, in a, in, I think it was in Elite, in well, obviously the modeling agency. Uh, so now, like, you know, like, you know, like I do castings again, like at that time, like you didn't even understand how the whole thing would like add up, like what's the yeah. connection here and everything. And then at some point I was like, from one day to another. I mean, it's a bit of a longer story because I was, uh, the whole decision of move to London, I actually took it when I was in Switzerland. And it was like from one day to another. And when I was in Switzerland, I called my mom, I called my best friend, I called everyone. I was like, I'm moving to London. They were like, when? I'm like, probably next week. And uh, and yeah, and I just like packed my bags and moved and uh, yeah. And yeah, and then the whole thing started. It's just that I, it's just that I knew that I have to sort of, do everything from the beginning. So yeah, I went to, I studied in London culture fashion, I studied in St. Martins, and then I sort of did a billion internships and a lot of like assisting jobs in like different, you know, parts of the industry. But yeah, I was supposed to be a lawyer. And up to now, a lot of my friends, even from the industry, they do ask me like, do you mind checking that contract? Or can you check like, t like in, you know, terms and conditions? I write my own contracts. So. But that's okay. Well, yeah, so that's sort of how the whole thing, uh, how the whole thing started. Wow, that's that's an amazing story. Yeah, like I totally, yeah, I, 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 I totally believe, I totally believe, I totally believe that like the, 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 uh, behind every creative there should be a legal base. I think they should make it mandatory because my my, my, my partner is a lawyer, so 
trust me, nobody can fuck up or fuck with me, you know, when it comes to that. Yeah, I'm yeah. Out of time. Check this. <laughs> but it's a good thing. It's like, I like the, the fact that I learn about those type of, like the, the le legalities of the business because that, that it can be very intimidating if you don't know nothing about it. Because, you know, like I remember always like when I had to sign something, like even before uh, doing what I do now, I, you don't understand anything about it, you know? No, but it's important. Like right before this, I was messaging with Andrew that we both uh, work with because I, I have a really cool idea that I want to do something. <laughs> and I know that it's like borderline legal. <laughs> In because of the because of intellectual property, so I just messaged. I was like, Andrew, how many years in prison, prison do you think I would go for if I did that? <laughs> he's like, but then like you know that we have to take that seriously. So he's like, I'm not sure. Let me ask. And then he just he said that who, who he's going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so then you can see like, is it worth it? <laughs> is it the idea is great, you know? Yeah. The idea is great. But equally, I know that like I can't afford to get you know the rights to do that, so it's music. So I really need that soundtrack specifically for something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. But that's, so I'm that's, like, that's, I'm, but that's the reason. That's the reason uh, why I know about music is be yeah. uh, because the copyright. Uh, if you want to use a track, it doesn't have to be even a well-known track. It's astronomical, you know. Yeah. Depending. Depending, like, if you want to do even a minute. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. They're like, oh, my God, I love this song. And then they do a YouTube video, and then they sing along that song, and they don't realize that it's copyrighted. So you will, mm. you will actually get get monetized, yeah. sued for that. Yeah, but this that. is, I mean, this is like a reoccurring, reoccurring issue. There's one fantastic British uh, designer um, that did a really, really important and great movie um, on uh, the, a lot of sort of things um, about LGBTQ plus uh, community and so on and so on. And I like, maybe people will think about who it is, maybe you not, know, and I can message you later, whatever. Um, but like, you know, I got sort of, I saw that the, you could watch the movie at, I think it was Royal Academy or one of the sort of arts colleges. And I was like, I saw it like last minute on Instagram and they were like, the last sort of screening is tomorrow, whatever it is. So I was like, wow, like I'm going, like I really need to see that. So I went, sent out a couple of friends, but like no one could make it because we all realized that it's so late. So I went by myself and then they, they had like a QA and a and stuff like that. And the whole thing was like, it's a great project. Like, why is it only, you know, why is the distribution so small? Music. Yeah. So Someone advised wrongly about music and, you know, it's stuff like that. So, yeah. But when I find out how many years uh, I would need to spend in prison for my project, I'll let you know as well. <laughs> <laughs> Might be worth it. Yeah. Might be, especially since we're in lockdown. Especially since we're in lockdown. Like, would that change much? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that you will just like, um, surroundings will be less, less yes. comfortable. Well, ap yes. uh, apart from your uh, legal background, have you developed any uh, survival skills? Any, any, has any, of, any type of skills manifested like? Have you become the Martha Stewart of the kitchen or the master of being a sloth or uh, the, the, the mastermind uh, trivialist behind all of TV shows since? None of that. So I'm, I don't think that I learned how to cook anything new. Uh, I can't think of one new thing that I learned how to make in the kitchen. Actually, I even burned something yesterday. Like yesterday or the, or the day before, like I was like I was on call and I completely because I had like loads of calls and I completely forgot. And then it's just like my flatmate just sent me a picture of what happened. Of what happened? I was like, oh, great, sorry. Uh, you know the whole pan, everything. So Martha Stewart cooking, baking, none of that, none of that. I make food. I, I mean, I do cook, but it's nothing new. I freeze stuff. A lot of stuff that I make is vegetarian. I don't eat a lot of meat. I'm not vegan or vegetarian, but I just don't eat a lot of meat. Um, my diet is very repetitive and it's very boring. It's very healthy, but it's very boring. So <laughs> nothing there. Uh, I mean, I could share with people how, how specific I am when it comes to like boiling eggs. And I can eat that for lunch like five days in a week. Oh, wow. uh, literally, but there's nothing nothing you know nothing that anyone would like to see so my my recipes would literally involve like how do you make a sandwich you know um so yeah so not nothing there any other sort of like survival skills uh or what changed 
I'm not like nothing to put like from that stuff. I like I think that I'm just like all all my muscles are like literally disappearing. Because I was like, okay, let, and I have so many clothes, like workout outfits as well, with tags. Uh, so I'm like, I can't do that. And then I was like, okay, I don't really, I normally cycle and I go to the gym and I do weights. And I don't really run anymore. So I was thinking maybe running is the thing to do right now. So I tried that, uh, although I'm not a fan, but the, the point is that so many people, and you know, like when people pass, if yeah. someone like sneezes, you don't even, I'm like, I can't, that's, you know, that's off the table. It's too much. Um, at least, because I'm not going to wake up early enough to go to be in the park by seven. I'm not one of those people. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I wish sometimes, but that's not happening. Um, what else? I mean, I can't do nails properly. I can do a lot of other stuff from like, you know, girls has, they, they have a lot of problems right now. Um, I'm just like thinking, no, like I'm also like really bad when it comes to like fixing things at home, like really, really bad. So like to me, like to me, like when, you know, like when you have, for example, like light bulbs, the ones that go like yeah. within sort of the ceiling, like to me, this is a reason to call an electrician to come in because I, that, that's, I, I only learned how to change those about like a few months ago. And this is not because I'm like stuck up or anything. It's because I hate doing things like that. Um, anything that anything that breaks but like now I told you like my uh, fridge is a new fridge but the fridge handle broke and you need to unscrew it and yeah. put the new one in and the owner of the house it, she said like Sylvia I'm sending it over and she's like Jesse and she messaged like just in case if that turns out too difficult for you to do I will deal with that after the lockdown I'm like after the lockdown it's fine um, because the fridge works so it's stuff like that so I mean, I, I think that this thing would need to go on for like significantly longer for me to change and improve and learn how to do things at home. Uh, so I'm quite, no, I'm quite shit at that. That, that, but, is, that yeah. is hilarious because like I, I, I'm, I'm from a trucker family. So even, even though I like to play with clothes, you know, yeah. I, I know, I know how to, you know, change the sugar cubes if you have to put the wiring on the, on the lamps and. You know, I can even do a mean, mean ass like French manicure. I've been told that in beauty school. Mm. Who would have known? Couldn't care less, but I know how to do mm. it. Um, mm. Okay, we are now uh, fast forwarding very, very close towards the end. So now we're going to go to the questions. So let's try to keep the questions moderate, moderate, well, I can't speak, uh, <laughs> slow, uh, shorter, just because we're running out of time. Um, first question that uh, I got sent already yesterday. What was the first thing that you told your uh, existing clients when the lockdown hit the fan? What was your first advice for them? Uh, hmm. I mean, there's like a couple of things that I always start with when I work with, when it comes to like consulting clients. So it's like, you know, young designers, independent brands and so on and so on. Um, you know, I, I think that in 99% of cases, I start by uh, going through what their core values are and um, understanding what it is that they want to do. As so this, what is the goal and um, how they think, what is the idea of how to get there? So in order for me to do my job, I need to understand what you stand for, what you want to do and what is your idea of how to get there. Only then I can tell you that you know, if your sort of suggested journey is the one that is likely to work. So for independent brands, small designers, the lockdown does not really change much because we're talking about brands and, you know, companies that don't really have a lot of employees. They might have one, might have two, might have five, but it's not a lot. They don't really have huge production units. So they don't have the responsibility of figuring out the whole like supply channel. So nothing really, a lot of people started like, oh, what are we going to do? Like nothing, not much changes for you because you can use that as an, as an opportunity to catch up and actually prep properly for the, for the next season. Um, so yes, yeah, so I always, regardless whether there's any pandemic or a usual fashion season, <laughs> I start by what it is that you want to do, what was your idea of how to get there? And then within your brand values, I uh, can suggest something that maybe can get you there quicker. Amazing. 
No, just because like I think that that was like sort of general thing, and I was I was also thinking about that like what is the sort of things like、yeah. people like okay, and then the, the next in the phase we're going to do this collection. Oh, and next in the phase now there's like a global pandemic, so we're not going to do anything for the next eight months. So,、mm-hmm. um, the next question is, what do you like most about your job? So I always look at it like I have two jobs. Uh, so one is consulting, and the other one is creative production.、Uh, when it comes to creative production, what I like is what you mentioned that you like about your jobs, which is sort of I see myself as within, obviously depending on the project and as much as possible. But sort of I like to see myself like a movie director, and that's what I'd like to be when I grow up.、Um, so that's you know that's sort of that's the you know if I can work on the concept and the,、um, you know concept execution and then see the results. The overall thing that's really really cool.、Uh, that's when it comes to、uh, creative production. When it comes to consulting,、um, I like to see that I actually help people. Yeah. That's like that's the main thing because working with work, working with sort of small、uh, brands and ind- independent labels, young designers, it, like your mistake of you know your mistake of that something that would be very very small could be like a test ride for like you know a big brand. Can cost them half a season in terms of like the budgets and in terms of things. So I like seeing very sort of small wins. It's you know that's sort of why I want to do it. Plus I like to I like to be precise.、So. Yes,、yeah. amazing.、Um, then the next question before we go to the infamous uh, uh, quick fire round.、Uh, what is the first thing you are going to do after this? Lockdown is lifted, and the answer cannot be a rave because we know that you want to go. To yeah,、rave. yeah. Well, I want to go to rave.、Uh, <laughs> no, I need to. Go, I need to go to a beautician. Like I need to go to a beautician to do. Like they need to do things that I can't do, and after that, I can go to a rave. Amazing, amazing. <laughs>、uh, so, for further ado, let's start the famous、uh, quick fire round. So, how, how do- many questions is it? So. How, do, how does this work? I will give you two options.、Uh, you can answer the, the best way you see how. Either, both, whatever. You know, no explanations. Like the answer speaks for itself. This is nothing serious. This is <laughs> this is a little bit of fun for the end. So let's start. Either both, either both,、uh, whatever. Well, it's like like I said that it's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.、Uh, boxing or yoga. Neither. <laughs> Whiskey or vodka. Whiskey. Preppy or casual. Casual. Spice Girls or All Saints. All Saints. Brad Pitt or George Clooney. <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> Movies or TV series. Movies. Tea or coffee. Coffee. Sugar or sweet. Neither. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I'm like, oh.、Uh, Avedon or Peter Lindbergh. Avedon. Zumba or Soul Cycle. Soul Cycle, if I had to.、Yeah. <laughs> Leather or denim. Denim. Da Vinci or Monet. Monet, for sure. Action or romance. Romance. Coco Chanel or Karl Lagerfeld. Coco Chanel. Michael or Janet Jackson. Michael. Sunset or sunrise. <sighs> Both. <laughs> Linda Evangelist or Christy Turlington. Christy for life. She's my favorite. And the last one, Harper's Bazaar or Numero. Numero. <laughs> There you, there you go. That that concludes the the funny quick crowd.、Uh, is there before we're actually going to be cut off in a couple of minutes? Is there anything、uh, anything you would still like to shout out to the viewers? Any great quick advice? Is there anything that、uh, we should look out for for you in the future? Is there is there any anything and how and where and where? 
Uh, I mean, it, you, like, I'm tagged, so if people want to, they can follow me. But the only, th the only thing that I want to say is what I said already, just like, you know, everyone be selfish, find something that you wanted to do and do it. And it doesn't mean to be mean and it doesn't mean to be busy. Just find something that works for you and that keeps you happy and it keeps you sane and that's your space, you know. So if that's watching a lot of Netflix and if it doesn't, you know, make you sick, that's, you know, that's your thing. And if it's, uh, yeah, if it's jogging at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., that's also your thing, you know. Just find something, be, be safe and be happy. Yes, and on, on a good note uh, for that before we wrap up, it seems to be that the world is starting to heal itself. There's positive news coming, even though we've lost so much. So uh, keep on optimistic keep the flag high you know there will be a day that we will all rave a lot and on that and on that i'm gonna say as a, <laughs> and on that note <laughs> as a as a thing today is the the eve of labor day in, in my yeah. motherland so please please fellow Finns and people whoever in in your countries who celebrate this celebrate at home there's always the next year and uh, be safe. Love you loads. Thank you, Cynthia, for joining me. Thank it was you. An absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Chat later. Ciao. Bye.